selected as her way to honor them both. But instead, we are here today for a plaque dedication for both mom and dad, and also honoring Betty's memory. To those who knew mom and dad, these two simple items a rock and a shoe represent their lifetime of joint strength and stamina. St. Augustine wrote, the world is a book and those who do not travel read only one page. Mom and Dad read many pages of their shared life book with travels that took them to interesting places, introduced them to fascinating people and gave them wonderful stories to share. Oral histories of their adventures and misadventures were mesmerizing, amazing, and inspiring. Rocks became a common thread in their lives, from the stone house that they built together, to the tons of rocks that they collected, to their rock-solid spiritual faith. Like the rocks they collected, their strong exteriors protected beautiful interiors, just as this, um, let's see, this is Geo. It's a, it's from Oregon, though, a thunder egg. Just as this thunder egg that's rough on the outside is beautifully polished on the inside. So like the rocks they collected, their strong exteriors protected beautiful interiors with the sheen polished by life's path. When Dad died after their 70-plus years together, I thought Mom would lose her will to live. But with the loving care and attention she was given by her caregivers the past two years, she got new purpose for her life. Though she no longer traveled and she could not even wear shoes anymore, she accepted her new role as a teacher with a spirited spunk and grace that captured hearts and earned admiration. From her wheelchair teacher's desk slash kitchen table, she shared how to make dumplings, apple pudding, and other tasty recipes. Under her tutelage, she taught her girls that a buffet is not just a menu option, a mantle was not an article of clothing, a davenport is a place to sit, and no one eats soup with a fork, at least in her house. <laughs> she taught us that old <coughs> means stupid, evidenced by her razor-sharp memory, innate ability to unscramble the daily word jumble, and a math wizardry and lightning speed ability to add numbers without paper or pencil. This, there are many simple examples of how her girls demonstrated their caring attention from the, um, the bed that Dorothy brought. Um, she brought a um, memory foam mattress for Mother's Hospital bed so that she would be more comfortable in the, in the bed to the eggs that Jackie brought from her chickens so that Mother could eat fresh eggs the giant word jumble that Helen made um, for my mom when she couldn't see as well from the hospital bed as she could from the kitchen table. Helen devised a way for mother to be able to do the word jumble. To the Yahtzee sheets that you see that Sue put around on the table, mother played Yahtzee so much if when you called you heard dice rolling in the background. She wasn't, she wasn't playing poker, she was playing Yahtzee and so Sue um, printed off those sheets by the dozens for her. To these Mary Jane slippers that Robin brought into the house because Mother couldn't wear shoes anymore, so she she brought her Mary Jane slippers to wear, which was appropriate since she did have such an affinity for shoes. Yet no one lives forever, and Dad patiently waited for Mom to join him. I recently came upon a poem that Dad had copied that it reflected their shared love story life together. The poem's entitled, Should You Go First? by Albert Kennedy Rosie Roswell. Should you go first and I remain to walk the road alone, I'll live in memory's garden dear with happy days we've known. In spring I'll wait for roses blue when fades the, the roses red when fades the lilac blue. In early fall, when leaves, when brown leaves call, I'll catch a glimpse of you. Should you go first and I remain for battles to be fought, each thing you've touched along the way will be a hallowed spot. I'll hear your voice, I'll see your smile, though blindly I may grope. The memory of your helping hand will buoy me on with hope. 
Should you go first, and I remain, to finish with the scroll, no lengthening shadows shall creep in to make this life seem droll. We've known so much of happiness, we've had our cup of joy, and memory is our one gift of God that death cannot destroy. Should you go first, and I remain, one thing I'll have you do, walk slowly down that long, lone path, for soon I'll follow you. I want to know each step you take, that I may walk the same. For someday down that lonely road, you'll hear me call your name. I know that they're together um, at last. And so, again, thank you all for coming. The one person I forgot to mention was Bonnie. Bonnie came to Mother's home every other week to do her hair. And when Mother had to go into a hospital bed, and so how do we get, get at the sink? Um, Bonnie had a special tool that she used that Mother could still get her hair washed without having to leave her bed. So for all the people, whether it was your calls, your visits, anything that you did for Mother, Jerry Fox came every day when Dad was in the hospital to check on Mother to bring her mail. All the folks that have done anything for Mother. We as her children, my, my brother George, my sister Barbara, and my Betty, my, myself, my, myself, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.